But I just want to say a little bit about inner wisdom, what it is. Some people call it intuition. Now, intuition actually literally means inner tutor. The tutor within, the teacher within that we all have within. And, you know, there's some philosophical debate as to whether our wisdom is inner wisdom, it's our own deep, wise, inner self. Or is it coming from some sort of external, universal intelligence, like God or something else? Um, and I find this, this question very interesting, and it was a question I was very interested in when I first started learning. What, what is it? Where does it come from? And actually the answer is both. Because I think inner wisdom and universal wisdom are, are they just completely connected. And there are two ways of connecting with it. One is for the more, you might call, faith type, to allow oneself to be receptive to something that feels or inner experience is bigger than us. But for others who might perhaps be more self-determining and self-realising, and a lot of Buddhists take this path, it's more comfortable and accessible to think that we are simply connecting with our own deep inner wisdom from within. So I guess what I'm saying is it doesn't matter how you conceptualise it, it's, it's just practical. Um, but for the purposes of this med meditation, we'll be, we'll be practising it uh, with the conceptual framework that we are we're connecting with our own inner wisdom. So intuition, as I was saying, means inner tutor. Um, there is a level of intelligence which lies on a different frequency, different level, different plane from intellectual understanding, academic understanding, as I'm sure you're all aware. Um, and as I was describing, when I was studying psychology, I loved the intellect. I've got a very strong intellect. In fact, Srimati means radiant intelligence. That's one of the interpretations. And I was given that name when I became ordained to reflect some of my qualities. So I'm not saying that the intellect to be dispensed with. Uh, I love, you know, sharp mind and sharp intelligence. It's, it's great. But as I was learning at university, when I was studying all these academic theories, I just felt unfulfilled. I felt there was something else that could uh, answer questions more deeply. And, and I guess that's the strata we're looking at now and today. It's, it's the wisdom strata, which is, is deeper, wiser. I mean, just the connotation of the word wisdom, wise, feels it has more gravitas, doesn't it? That word again, gravitas, than the intellect, which feels kind of lighter and up here. Um, so we speak of wise old people and wise lamas. And so we're looking for this bigger, deeper, wiser level of knowledge that, that, go, that, that is perhaps um, beyond the mere intellect. Now to access this level of wisdom, we all have it, we all have inner wisdom, we're all absolutely supremely wise. Everyone, every single one of us on the planet has that capacity. But not every single one of us on the planet has access to it. And really all we need to do is learn how to access it. And if I have a mission for my life, it's to help people access their own inner wisdom. Because then, job done, we sort out communities, we sort out businesses, we sort out society, we sort out health, we sort out everything. Should people simply be able to commune with that inner guidance, that guidance system to make all their decisions wisely and with love and, and for the best? So the reason many of us don't have access to that wisdom is because, well, maybe we've just not encountered the means and the mechanics, we've just not been in the right culture, we've not met the right people, the right teachers or, or whatever, we've just not been exposed to the opportunity to open up to that. And what happens if we're not used to contacting our deep depth and our wisdom is that obviously we just use what we have which is our, you know, our wits and our intelligence and, and all of that, which is great and works after a fashion. And, you know, us human beings are incredible at, at working out how to manage life and 
deal with challenges and problems and, and get through. However, if we're not very aware, if we're not very conscious, if we are operating at a superficial level of ourselves, we're making decisions that may not be in our best interests. We're making them automatically. We're making them headless chicken fashion. And in fact, what's happening is we've been driven by unconscious beliefs, thoughts, fears that aren't conscious, they're not in our awareness, so we don't even know we're doing them. And we, th we justify those actions, thoughts, beliefs with the intellect. We come up with terribly logical, rational reasons why we're doing something and we get very adamant about it. But actually what is driving that is some kind of less conscious or unconscious emotional impetus. Which means we're not really free because we've been driven by something other than ourselves, some other than something that we're not really masters of our destiny. And this was another great topic that I was obsessed with when I was at university. Are we free? Do we, are we free? Do we choose our destiny? Or are we just products of our conditioning? We just, you know, we're brought up a certain way, we've got certain genetics and it's all going to just happen and that's it. We might as well just give up. And, and a lot of the, the stuff I was studying in psychology and sociology and philosophy was, was exploring this. Are we free or are we determined? Are we, are we conditioned? And it wasn't until I started learning about Buddhism and meditation that I got an answer to that question. After four years of academic study and, and studying that question, it wasn't until I learned to meditate that, ah, I saw what the answer was. I listened to a, a lecture by my new Buddhist teacher called Mind Reactive and Mind Creative. And he described that actually there are two sorts of mind, a reactive mind and a creative mind. The reactive mind is the one that's automatic, headless chicken, acting from something that you're not fully conscious of and therefore not necessarily making the right choices. The creative mind is a mind that has information, it has pause, it has self-reflection, it has self-awareness and therefore a choice can be made from that space, from that pause. And so therefore both is true. So many people perhaps, and ourselves, perhaps act reactively. But with meditation, with pause, we open up the opportunity to, it's almost like time slows down. I don't know if you've had this experience when you've meditated. You open your eyes and all the colours are brighter and everything just seems more alive and there's more space around everything. Or if somebody irritates you, you don't immediately kind of, you know, you don't get that charge immediately inside you because you've got some sort of inner resource which kind of allows you to just, ah, see it from another perspective and, and respond from that wiser perspective. So I find that concept really helpful, mind creative and mind reactive. And as someone pointed out to me, as Pat, actually my husband, the word reactive and the word creative, they're made up of the same letters, just jumbled up. <laughs> it's always fine that sort of poetic when that kind of thing happens. So I guess what we're doing here and what we you know we're doing is we are we are developing that space, that creative mind, that awareness so that our choices become um, more conscious and therefore in our best interests and it's as simple as that really.